All right, so what we want to do is we want to prove series proof or series by proof by induction. Now on the board here, we've got what clearly looks like an arithmetic series because it's a sum of uh, regularly changing numbers and it all equals a definitive expression n over, or n times n plus one all over two. Now, in stage one, we typically wouldn't give it to you like this, or if we did, we'd allow you to just make the assumption that it can be sigma notation to prove it. What we're going to do is we're going to be more explicit. First thing when we encounter a problem like this is we have to define what is our P of N. So starting off, what we'd say is P of N is equal to, and how could we write this as a series using sigma notation, please, realm of the row theorem? Um, what symbol do we use? The A sigma. The sigma. It's actually an S. An S. It's a Greek S oh. sum. And it's going to be I equals one. one. And then up here N. is going to be N. And then, then one. I plus one. Equals. <laughs> plus one. N plus one. There we go. Now we're halfway there. What do we need to define? I. And <coughs> what is N? One. N is. N is positive integer. N is positive integer. Any integer, do we include zero? No. No, because that's not where it starts. Any positive integer. So we start at number one. Okay. This is the first step. We define our P of N. After we've defined our P of N, we're now ready to actually get into induction. For induction, we always start with our base case. So we prove the first one works. And then we do our inductive case where we assume the kth, kth case is true. And then prove that the k plus one case is true. So our base case is going to be proving P of one, not P of zero, P of one. So doing this, we have a left-hand side, which is going to be sigma n is one, starting at i equals one, i. Subbing in the value, it's just one. Or you could pull it from up there. For our right-hand side, we're going to get, no need to state that n is one, it's already stated here, one, 1 plus 1 all over 2. And I'm not even going to worry about doing the individual steps. I'm just going to evaluate it as 1. Therefore, therefore, left-hand side is the same as right-hand side. And our base case is indeed true. Seem good so far? Does it ring or ring a bell? Yeah, the last bit. Yeah. yeah. This is the simple part. Yeah. Now this is where the fun begins. We're going to get changed if this will do it. Undecided. I think you should decide. Yes. I think I'll decide to leave it out. Oh, I think it's pretty bad. That would be a good idea. Okay. Next. Okay, we've done an expression for P of N. We proved that the base case is true for P of N. Now it's time to make an assumption. What's our assumption going to be, Lenny? That assuming P of K is true. Assuming P of K is true. Then, if P of K is true, then of course, oh, I did a bad job there. Every time we see N, we change it to a K. Be careful not to change that to a K. I used to do it all the time, because I'm a silly sausage sometimes. Is that cool? Now, what have I forgotten to do? Isaac? Define it. 
What do I need to define? Oh yeah, K. Conditions for K, where K is a member of the positive integers. If you don't define it, you lose a mark on notation. Hence, people drop marks in How really... How can you drop to still pass? Uh, you'd still pass if you forgot to do that. Yeah, like you'd only count it once or twice. It just does it bring down your communication. It's just an easy way to lose marks, but also an easy way to keep marks. Think about it as you've got all your marks to begin with, and every time you make little mistakes like that, you're losing out. So if you don't do the question, you get full marks. No, you'd be losing out because you miss the opportunity <laughs> to show that you could do it. So if you just define each thing in a question, you get a bunch of marks. You would pass. But you still get some marks. Yeah, you get some marks. You get like at least an A plus. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so we're making the assumption this is true. And we've defined all of our variables. Next, we need to actually state what it will look like. Now, with this, I always recommend know what you're targeting. You could do it off to the right. I'm. Uh, I'm stretch for space here, so I'm going to just do it on the left here. RHS is going to be K plus 1 times K plus 1 plus 1, all in brackets, all over 2. This is what we're trying to move towards. We always pick either the left hand side or the right hand side and we make one equal to the other. We try not to fiddle with both, we just fiddle with one typically the right hand side for this course maybe not in the you, test or the exam if you wanted to fit with it to a simpler area like instead of saying that k plus one plus one yeah that, yeah you're allowed to do it but it's just frowned upon you would not plenty of people have done it in the past and they still got full marks but typically it's just a nice it's a better showcase of your it's a clearer showcase of your mathematical prowess if you can make the left hand side just look like one difference from the right hand side. Does that make sense? All right. Now, since we've defined what we're moving towards, let's try and get our left hand side to move towards it. Firstly, let's just state what we're going to get. It's going to be k plus one ups here now, and then i equals one here and just i. Next step. We can't work with that yet, so we're going to unroll one of the terms out. We're going to move the k plus one term out of this, uh, out of the series. So we still get sigma here. We're still sigma, but then we've got a plus, and then it's k plus one. So the k plus one got booted out of the sigma notation. From there, we have an expression for this. So we're going to use our P of K. Our assumption up here, yep, our assumption here matches what we have here. So this is now K times K plus one all over two. make the mistake. They've got two fractions. What we want to do is we think, what are we moving towards? What's our denominator and what we want to get to? Two. Two. So what we want is all of these terms to be over two. To do this, just multiply this guy by two over two. That will get us to the form we want. I'm going to skip a step and put them all on the same denominator together. K k plus 1 plus 2 k plus 1. Next step, think about it. What do we have in common between these two terms? k plus 1. k plus 1. So we factorize for k plus 1. k plus 1 at the front. k plus... Christian, what do you reckon? Two, you're in year eight and you're already doing spec math. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. boy. All over two. Split the board to get more space. It's still our left hand side. And our left hand side is equal to k plus one. Now I've got a k plus two here. K plus one checks out. What do I need here? K plus one plus one. K plus one plus one. So I pull out the K plus one, leave a plus one behind, put it all over two, and therefore I show that my left hand side is equal to my right hand side. Why? Because math. Yeah. Proving P of K plus one is true. And since P of 1 is true, and P of K plus 1 is true, whenever P of K is true, then P of N is true for all positive integers. Is that cool? Do we see the method here? When we're doing series ones, we're going to use this transformation here. Kick out the k plus one term, sub in your p of k. And then we're just checking, do you know your partial fractions? Any questions? You surviving there, Madden, with all those donuts? I need one more. <laughs> I need one more, I guess. 27, 50. Attaboy.